All right, we're live. Hey, this is Chris, and Telly's not here because um, he screwed up, and he had something really important that he had to do with, wait, my other computer. Damn it. There we go. Um, so he had something he had to do with his wife, and he forgot. So he's in trouble. So I told him it was okay. I could handle it. So it's just me. And this guy over here is actually a friend of mine. And I'm really excited to have him on. Um, Joe Thibodeau from Joe Land Props. And Joe is amazing at making armor and helmets and props and stuff like that. He like, I've always been like, I help him with printing, you know, so I have my thing, but I'm always in awe with the stuff that Joe shows me. Like he sent me pictures. I'm like, Oh my God, um, make me one or whatever. But so he does an awesome job. And he, I, when I asked him if he would do the show, because, um, I know I posted it in the description and Facebook and stuff. Um, I struggle and I know so many people struggle with sizing armor and helmets for themselves. I don't know how to do it. And Joe does such a fantastic job. I was like, Hey, you want to come be on the show? And he said, yes. So here's Joe. Hey guys. Good to meet you. Um, thanks for having me on Chris. This is uh, great news. I, I get a lot of questions about this as well. So I, I think it's a great opportunity, uh, to help out some people. Um, so I use, uh, quite a few different, uh, programs really to, uh, do, depending on what I'm trying to do, if I'm using a pepker file or if I'm using a 3d print, uh, file or, or what have you, uh, there's quite a few different ones. So what I'll do is I'm just going to share my screen here. All right. Can you guys see that now? Screen is about to pop up. There it is. There okay. So, what we so the first one that I, I really like um, is this program called Make Human, and this is actually a free program. If you look it up uh, on Google, it allows you to download it and uh, you can use it. And this allows you to make a custom 3D image of yourself using your own measurements. So this this is uh, what the file looks like when you first open it up. Um, when you go to I think I can't remember if it's customer measure. There you go. Yeah. So. What happens is you start off um, this and you can choose your gender, male, female, whatever in between that you might want to have. Um, you can select an age and you can actually see down here around the bottom, it will pop up after you change it to what the age is that you set. Um, or at least it usually does. Um, but you can set your different muscle tone if you're a little heavier set or you're very fit. Um, like estimation of your weight, stuff like that. So it, it really allows you to create uh, a custom image. Uh, so basically after you kind of set your very broad uh, macro specifics like uh, gender, age, et cetera, you go to the measure and over here, it has a whole selection of different uh, body parts that allow you to create your custom character. So as you can see here, like for over oh, on neck, so when we go over, we have next circumference and neck height. And when you click each one, it sh actually shows you on the model where to measure. And then you input the data. And when you're finished, you'll have uh, more or less a body that, that looks like yours. Uh, it's never very fl flattering uh, when you see it, for example, because it only moves certain geometries on the model. So for example, thigh circumference, you can see the thigh right now, Let's zoom in. Um, but if I increase the circumference, it just kind of only moves part of it, not the whole thing. Uh, so sometimes even though you put your measurements in there, it doesn't really look like you, but the important thing is that the measurements where they need to be for your armors will all be in the correct spots. So later when you export this file, you'll be able to open it up. So one of the more important things is height. Um, Right now it's it's uh, trying to import something, so it's not showing, but normally down here, it'll actually say what, oh, there it is, height, 171 centimeters. Now I'm uh, about 182, so we're just going to increase that. So 184, increase just a little bit. This is just uh, more of an overall height uh, for your macros. There you go, so 182. So now when I uh, change my custom, 
features in, uh, in here, it will actually try. So if I make my legs a certain length, it'll only allow a certain length remaining for the, my upper body because it knows I'm only 180 centimeters. So it won't allow you to accidentally like make your legs too small and your upper body too big. Um, so if you're That's entering, cool. I was going to ask you that because I have long legs and a short torso. Yeah. So what happens though is it'll, it'll start to move it. So if, if it's 182 centimeters and my legs are a hundred of those, then after I do my leg setting, it will only allow me to do my upper body with the remaining 82 centimeters. Um, if I go over that, it will start to shrink down my legs a little bit um, because it knows that, well, you're only 182 centimeters. So why, why would your overall measurements equal higher than that? Um, but it is, uh, it is a really great program. So if, if we were all done entering our different ones, then we would want to export this. So, oh, and also I, I should point out beforehand, there's uh, a whole bunch of different poses that we can do. Um, oh no. Look at all those poses. Yeah. One second now, I'm just gonna reopen this. Oh, that's not very one. Joe, hide the porn, hide the porn. <laughs> None of that in there, I'm afraid. There we go. Oh, that's lame. I expected much more from you. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So I'm just reloading it. I, I think I, I fiddled with some stuff when I was uh, going through, so it doesn't want to show me the poses. But normally, it'll, it'll allow you to do a selection of poses. Um, pose. Here we go. So when we go to pose, like you can do all sorts of stuff, but it will keep the measurements that you had set and allow you to do the different ones. So uh, I usually do like there's two standing ones. I have this. I ha I exported one for myself with my arms down like this, and then ones with my arms slightly out. Or I think that's just the nun. Yeah, that's just the nun. So that way. Um, I have my arms in a few different positions depending on the armor that I'm trying to fit. Like if I want more arm focused stuff that I usually choose the model that has the arms outward so that nothing is kind of squishing in, as you can see with uh, sand to the arms kind of go into the chest a little bit. So sometimes a little hard to uh, size it properly. So I usually export these two different ones because I find that for chest armors, uh, uh, certain poses are better. Uh, so either way, when you're finished, you are going to export your model and it allows you to select what style you want. So, I mean, I always personally use STL and then it allows you to select what the scale units are. So, I mean, if you use um, like 3D Builder or anything like that, when you open it up, it'll usually say, what measurement is this in? So you're gonna want it to be uh, uh, inches or centimeters, what have you. So I use centimeters because uh, it's, it's a little easier for the program that I use. Um, and then when you're done, you really need to Say again, sorry? And you're Canadian? Yes, and I'm Canadian. Um, so what happens, and then you can click here and allow you to select where you actually want to save your file. So once you export it, um, you're also going to want it to be binary because if it's not binary, then um, it, it likes when you export it, sometimes it has like a missing hole and, and, and what have you. So selecting binary right there will actually allow you to uh, save the model that's going to be a little more like this. So once you saved it, like here's one that I opened up in 3D Builder. So this is more or less uh, exactly the same shape as my personal self. Uh, when we go to the measurements as well, you can see here we got millimeters. So we got 182, 180, uh, sorry, 1,820 millimeters high. So that's 182 centimeters. So it's got the proper height for me. So as you can see, I have much, a very large upper torso compared to my legs. Um, so, but what this is going to do is help me fit all the proper pieces that I want to use so that I don't end up trial and error printing, uh, a bicep piece 10 times, trying to get the right size and throwing away all those pieces. I mean, you may still need to tinker here and there, but more or less, this will allow you to do that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and import one here. So this is the new Mandalorian armor that we are uh, currently working on for production for everybody. So here we go. So we'll take this, here's the chess piece. We'll go ahead and load that right into here. Oh, 
All right, so there's our chest armor, and this will allow us to size properly. So I'm just going to leave that to 90. Now, do you find 3D Builder really just works? I, I really like 3D Builder. Well. It's just very straightforward. It's easy to use. Um, as as I'll, I'll show you a few features here as well, um, so you can check them out. But I just find it very, very easy. It's like using an iPad. Uh, it, it's kind of geared towards the average person uh, to use. So there we go. So we can mash this up right on there and really see how it fits. And you can, you can import. You can click and drag right into this, or you can just uh, go into open or, or what have you. You can also insert geometries such as cubes and cylinders, stuff like that. Um, but what I really like about this one is it allows you to paint so you can actually choose what colors you want to use. So, I mean, that's kind of a silvery already, but you can actually paint it and, and make it different colors as well to stand out, especially if you're using multiple pieces so you don't actually confuse them. Like if we put the add the abs uh, section on here, we might want to change the color just so it's easy to differentiate the pieces when we're sizing everything. Uh, but it also allows you to edit. So we, I could split this in half or um, merge it onto the abs. So I could take select this and the abs and merge the two pieces together and they would print now as one piece. It allows you to do a couple different things. So this program is really easy. It's free um, if you have a PC it's it's a it's a free download if you don't already have it on your pc you can just get it from the microsoft store for free it's just called 3d builder um i think it actually comes pre-installed it came in well it, a lot of times they do my machine a lot of times they do um my my new alienware that i got did not have it so i had to download it but again it's free so it doesn't make a difference so that's so that's what i love about these two programs so the make human and 3d builder are both free and uh it allows you to export your character that you created um, so that you can easily match up your pieces. The other program that I really like to use is this one here. This one is not free. I believe it's $20 US, um, but it's it's a lifetime uh, license for it. Uh, it's called Armorsmith Designer. Uh, and it, it is a really great program. Uh, so I would highly suggest people look into it because uh, the, the guy updates it frequently. It's always free updates. He, he sends me an email to let you know there's an update available. Um, but it's very similar to the one that I just showed you before. So you can select male or female. Um, and it allows you to change all the different characteristics, like the heights. I already have my height in here at 182. Um, and it allows you to change all the different areas as well. Um, and it'll when you select it, it'll actually tell you how big each of these pieces is and the measurements that are there. And this allows you. The only downfall of this one is you cannot export this one like you can the other one into an SDL file. You have to leave it in the program. Um, this I find is best when you're using Pepecura files because when you import your Pepecura file, which I do not currently have with me, once you size up the piece, like um, you can you can uh, select, say we import the chest piece in a Pepecura file, it'll show the the 3D built chest piece here. And when we hit unfolds, it'll actually un re unfold it for you with the new measurements that you scaled it to. So if you take the 3D image and it reduced it by 20% in the X direction, 30% in the Y direction, and then uh, let the X by alone, obviously all those geometries have now changed. So all the pieces that you print off later to connect also need to change. Um, but when you click the unfold button up here, it will actually automatically unfold it for you. And then it'll bring you up. I, it, it might crash because I don't have a thing. Oh, no, there it is. So what happens is you'll see this um, this little area down here. Uh, normally, it'll have several different, this is like a size of a page. And then all the pieces will be on there. And you can increase the size, and it'll give you several other pages. And then you can click and rotate them to fit them really well. And then when you're finished, you can actually export that Papakura file and save it. So then when you open it up in Pepcura Viewer or Designer and print it later, you can go ahead and do it and it'll have all the proper sizes that you actually uh, And that's mainly for foam armor, right? Yes, it can be for foam or for, for paper. Some people make Pepcura uh, uh, cardstock as well. Um, so either one of those, yes, it will work for that. What's really nice about this one too, I haven't done it and I can't really remember how, but you can actually rotate certain pieces like the joints in here as well. Like you can see they're kind of on little balls like a, like a mannequin. So you can actually uh, change those. I, I've never done it, so I'm not entirely sure how, so you, you'd have to fill it around. Uh, but it's really good. You can, however, still import 
3D parts into this, you just can't export them out later. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and do one. So uh, costume will import. All right, we're in the Mandalorian again. So we'll import that same chest piece that we saw before. And you'll see it's up here now. So when you click it, it'll show it here. Um, so you can actually click and drag it where you want it to be. So this is a chest piece. So you just choose the sprocket that's the front of the chest. And that's where it's going to more or less uh, put it. So now when I select it, I can move it in and out. Here we go. I don't know if this mannequin is actually scaled uh, properly for me. I think it is, but I don't know. Um, but here, so here we are, the chest, and we can zoom in and see how it fits on here as well. So you can scale this too. So you select the part, select scale, and oh, here we go, sorry. There we go. So you can change the position, you can change the scale here, and you can do that uh, as a uniform scale, or you can do it individually as well. Um, and then that way, when you change it on here, it will actually increase everything else. So it, it, it this one is a bit finicky, but so it's better to just kind of enter it in. So 80% enter, as you can see, uh, the Y direction just shrunk. So that way you can do it that way. The only difference is, like I said, you can't export these pieces. However, this will allow you to determine um, the sizing you need here so that later on when you open up the part in 3D Builder, you can scale it down the exact same way. So on 3D Builder here, you can have millimeters or if you, uh, if you click this, you can actually convert it as well sizing there we go all right so you can actually convert it as well to percentage so if i want to do the same one i would select the y again you can see this one highlights in green so you can see which direction it is i can scale that 80. so now i know from looking at the other builder what the sizing is that i need um, so it's kind of just a, a personal preference of, of which one you want to use you can do both um, my personal preference is making a character and make human and then exporting the file and then sizing the pieces in 3d builder um, but if you don't like that, you do like the the garage. It is it, it handles more functions. So if you do do Papakura files and stuff like that, you can do those. Yeah, you said do do. Hey, do do. Um, so you can. I'm five. <laughs> so you can do Papakura files in the Armor Smith. Sorry, in the Armor Smith, but you can't open those up in 3D Builder. They won't. They won't recognize the 3D files, so you can't use them here. So depending on what you're doing, you can size them in two different ways. Um, in the Make Human as well, you can also do uh, the size of like your head, for example, if you need to do helmets. So that's where I was just gonna go. I'm like, what yep. about helmets? Yeah. So and, you, hang on a second. So yeah. I know because you can't. So when Joe's doing all this, he can't actually see the the rest of the screen. He's only seeing his screen, so he's not seeing um, the questions and stuff. So, um, so. Chris Browning, who I know you know, uh, was very saddened because he, he's heartbroken apparently because he was assured that he he would be the model. So he's sad. <laughs> Sorry, big that. guy. Um, and then uh, like Bill, him. it does look kind of like him. It needs more more <laughs> facial hair. Um, and then uh, Bill's actually wants to know uh, if these are actually resource intensive apps. Like how? I mean, I know you've got an Alienware machine. I have a ridiculous machine here. Um, um, but average person doesn't because they don't need right. it. Right. Um, um, they can. I would highly the, the Armor Smith I find does because it's not really. It is meant to be used more with Papakura files, so it's not really meant to handle. That's why you can actually see it even being a little choppy on my screen. Um, because it's not really meant to handle 3D images, even though it will. But if you use this with a Pepecura file, it's not very large. So you would be able, now you can see that I deleted the part. It, it's, it's moving much, much better. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if you use a Pepecura file in here, um, it doesn't take up as much memory. So it'll be very easy. Um, however, if you're using it with 3D Builder, uh, you should be fine. Just uh, like I, I didn't always have an Alienware, and I've been using um, 3D Builder for a, a very long time. Uh, so I would probably try to use stick with this if you are worried about your memory usage 
in the programs. So uh, I would definitely stick with this because this is uh, a lot less memory intensive to use this setup. Cool. All right. Show me how to do a helmet. Okay. Because I need to make a Mandalorian helmet for me. Okay. So in here, there's a couple different ways. This isn't the way I personally did mine, but once you, me, there is one in here for head size. I just don't recall where it is. Face. So there we go. So uh, age. So you can, in this one, you can change the, uh, the sizing of the face too. If you got a bit of a, Ooh, hello. Stop showing us the junk. Right. So if you got a bit of a, a, a chubbier face or what have you, you, you can change the size of your face and your jawline, and all sorts of different stuff, angle of your chin. Um, but there is different uh, setups in here in order to do it. However, it doesn't have an actual um, or here we go, head size. There we go. So depth, but it doesn't really tell you what the size is, is the only unfortunate thing. It doesn't give you like a circumference, I don't believe. Do, 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 do. No, not really. So you can't really set it that way. But what I usually do is I usually leave the stock uh, head in place. So for example, on this one, this was just the stock head that it came with. So what I would do in order to scale the head on this properly um, is I, I usually do my, my helmets separate than I do for the rest of the armor. So I'll show you kind of what I did. I actually got a 3D scan of my head done, which is way better if you can uh, do that or you know somebody who has a scanner. Um, but you can use it this way. So what you would do is you take the body that you you made, split it so it's just the head and neck. Okay. And now what you would do to size this appropriately, I mean, it's going to be close to your head and, and head sizes don't vary a whole lot. Like most people's heads are pretty close to the same size. I know some people got really big heads and some people got really small heads. But, My 14 um, year old has a ginormous head. Yeah. Some people got really big heads. So here's what I do though. Um, right above my eyebrows, I will slice it there and then I'll slice it again, but I'm just going to keep the bottom. So just, uh, there we go. So it's just like a slice of the head. Okay. I'll slice that. Now I'm going to save this as an STL file and I'm going to print this around. Okay. So once this is printed, I'm going to take my, my measuring tape or, you know, what, whatever you use to, to measure, take all your body measurements and you're going to measure the circumference of this the whole way around and see what that number is. Then you're going to measure the same part of your actual head in the same area and see what the difference is. So if you take that number, uh, say this is, too small. If I divide is that the, the widest number, part, yes. Well, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the widest part. Ish. You just have to make sure you measure the same part on your head that you sliced on the head of the mall, so that you you're actually measuring the same area. So usually I just do it right above the eyebrows because it's easy to keep track of. So you measure the circumference, then you measure the circumference of your actual head, and then you see the difference. And you can actually calculate that uh, as a percentage of of how much it's off. So if if this is if my head is, let's just keep the number simple, if it's 100 millimeters around and this uh, 3D printed piece is only 80, then I know this is 80% of the size of my actual head. So I want to increase the model head by 20%, and that should give me the same size. After I change it and scale it up, I'll reprint it again, and then I'll measure it once I reprint it. And if it gets the same measurement as my head, then I know it's perfect. If I need to tweak it again, then I'll do it again. But once I know the percentage that this needs to be increased, say it's 25% when we're done, I'll go back into just the head file that we made earlier, and I'll increase that head file by that percentage. And that means now your your circumference of your head on the model will be the same as what yours is, is in real life. So I'll open up the... Joe is like demystifying helmet printing. Yeah, so it's it, it seems a lot more complicated than it really is. Um, let me find. Oh, I thought I had a copy of my head on here. I don't. It's on my other file. That's okay. We'll just uh, we'll just use this. Um, so here's another one here. So what happens is I, this would just be the head. 
But then once you have the correct size that you want, you will click and drag in the helmet. And then all you're going to do is, is is basically put it over top of the head of the file and increase or decrease the size until it looks like it more or less fits. So, And what I really like about this particular uh, program is that when I hover over the body, it will actually allow me to see a transparent view. Oh, that's cool. Well, underneath so now you can see so I can see where my eyes are lining up here with the visor um, you always want to have in any helmet that you're going to 3d print you want to have room 3d printed helmets do not feel very comfortable on your head when they're actually sitting on your head by themselves because it's hard plastic they move around all the time because they're not secure so what you really want to do is have space inside to add uh, little strips of foam like I take these little five millimeter sheets thick sheets of uh, foam and cut them into slices and I'll put ones around, like the. Uh, I'll do one that goes all the way around, uh, like this, the sides of the head, all the way around the back, so it fits nice and snug. So when I slide it onto my head, it's it's securely on there. Like I can look around quickly, and it's not shaking all over the place or tilting forward or anything like that. I'll put some on the top as well, so that it's not sitting on top of my head all day. Especially some helmets that I make are are pretty big, so they get really heavy. Um, this way it's nice and comfortable on your head, but it keeps it nice and tight and form fitting to your head. So it's not all sloppy and, and loosey goosey on you when you're walking around. Um, so yeah, again, in this program, you can do, you can use this lock key here in order to make it a uniform scale or to change each part individually. Here you can see the millimeter sizes, but you can also click this and it'll give you a percentage. So if I felt like this is a little too tall or I felt like the whole thing was just slightly too big, I could just do a uniform one and make it say 90% and it'll change all the values. Obviously, I can see that this is probably a little too small for me because you can see my ears poking out on either side here. So it's probably not quite the size for me. Uh, I would definitely have that problem. I have giant ears. Yeah, I also have giant ears. That, that's why, um, if, like I said, if you can, if you can find someone that can do a 3D scan of your head and then size that one. I'm actually getting a 3D scanner soon. Yeah, they, they, you can actually find the services around. Like, usually there's people just on Kijiji or uh, I know the U.S. don't have GG, but like, uh, or like in the states, but there are, are places like if you look in in forums and what have you, people have 3D scanners locally, or there will be a company that has it. Um, mine was really cheap. I don't know how cheap it normally is, but they did a 3D scan of my head. It's nothing crazy. It's not high definition or anything. It just gets the basic layout. Uh, but it was like ten bucks. So is and it took about two minutes, and then they just emailed me the SDL file. So it was really worth it. So if you can find it, I do highly suggest for helmets uh, for your head to do that. Um, because then it's an exact replica of your head. So if you size that properly, you know it's exactly the way it should be. Um, but yeah, so th so this looks really good. Uh, but like I said, you can see inside, um, you can't see where I'm pointing on the screen, but you can basically see all around the head, there's uh, a good little bit of room there to add those pieces of foam that I was talking about, make it nice and uh, nice and wearable for you. Because the big problem people make a lot is they'll make the helmet too tight, and then they can't, it's either too tight, they can barely put it on, it's resting against your face, and that's going to hurt your face by the time you're, if you're going to a Comic-Con or something like that, it's, you're, you're not going to feel very good later. Um, or they make it too loose, and it's flopping all over the place. So if it is, you want it to be just a little bit looser than your head, put the foam pieces in and hold it nice and snug. And that's uh, that's that's how I do all of my helmets. All so, right, uh, let's see. What do we got? Um, oh, bro. <laughs> so... Uh, Bills wants to know graphics requirements. I, 3D Builder, I know it's it's pretty very minimal. low. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very you minimal. You don't need anything crazy for that. Um, um, I don't know the graphics requirements myself personally for these programs, um, but if you do, you can just find them searching Google very easily. And they'll on the website, they have the, the graphics requirements. Um, like I said, either, any of these programs should run on a, a pretty standard laptop as long as it's not like 10 years old. Um, the only thing is, like I said, if you're going to use the, the armor Smith, it's not meant for 3D pieces, even though it will accommodate them. So it does slow up a little bit on that one. But if you're just using, I mean, if you're just using uh, uh, parts in 3D Builder, it should be good, but it also depends on the file that you have. So if you have a 3D image file that's incredibly detailed, high uh, high number of polys, then it's, it's going to slow down. But that'll slow down on anybody's computer. 
you can use a, a, a product actually that I can show you here called uh, Limit State. Oh, I don't think mine's working. But uh, here you can actually import uh, the model in. And when you select it, you can hit simplify and it'll actually reduce the number of polys. So uh, which are the, the, the polygons that actually make up uh, the file. So if it's got a million and that's really slow on a computer, you can actually hit simplify and it'll chop the number in half. Or you can actually select how many you want to have. Um, but normally I just let it do its own thing and it'll reduce it by half. And then all of a sudden it becomes much more manageable without really affecting the quality. Um, if you continue to simplify it, simplify it, simplify it, simplify it, you will start to see the quality go down and it'll have lots of big triangles. Um, but normally files are complex enough that if you simplify it once or twice, you don't really lose any uh, quality. And then that way it'll lower the size of the file so that when you import it into here, it'll be a lot more manageable and we'll slow down your computer as much. Yeah, I love limit state. I use it to fix almost every model I print. Yeah, I have to uh, I have to redo mine. I don't think I have my license isn't working anymore, so I'll have to get a new one. But um, yeah, so that's that's so, more or less it. I mean, I'll show you guys, I'll go back into here now. And, uh, let me ask you this while you're doing helmets. Um, how would you go about after so you're done? You you've sized that perfectly for yourself and you print it. What are your kind of favorite ways to add a visor to that? Okay, hold on. Let me grab one and show you. Well, uh, well, here I'll show you guys this piece first just because I happen to have it here. So this is a piece that I sized for me doing exactly the way that I showed you. So this is uh, uh, our, our friend Johan's model of the uh, Mark 85 Iron Man suit. So as you can see, it, it now fits me pretty much perfect. Um, it's got, like I said, just a little bit of room inside to add some foam so it, it fits nice and secure and snug. Uh, especially, this is going to have an undersuit, uh, like a, a morph suit or something like that underneath it. So uh, by putting on the inside, putting the uh, pieces of foam on it, you can actually put uh, Velcro and stuff like that on there. And it'll sit really nice and secure so that when you actually glue the other side to your morph suit, it'll stay there and uh, it won't move around or fall off or anything like that. Um, so for visors, I'm going to be right back. I'm just going to grab a helmet that I have that has a really nice visor and I'll grab the uh, Mandalorian helmet that we're making to show you kind of what's going on with it. One second. Score. Joe's going to be right back. So does anybody have any questions to ask Joe while Joe is going to get his helmet? I must sit here and wait. I've got a cat that keeps trying to climb up my leg. Kind of uncomfortable. Anyway, how was everybody's Christmas, holiday, Hanukkah, whatever? I don't care. We, whatever you celebrate. I hope you had a good one. Okay, so What's here's uh, Kylo Ren uh, helmet that I did a while back. I'm not sure if we can see this very well. You can see the visor inside. This is actually just a very thin piece of plastic that I got at one of the uh, the plastic stores. They they sell all sorts of different kinds of plastic, like acrylic rods, stuff like that. Um, but I wanted something that would be nice and flexible that I could still see through. So this is actually just a, a clear piece of a, an acrylic sheet that's very, very thin, so it's very pliable and flexible. And I went to, uh, I, guess I went to Canadian Tire. I, I know it's not gonna help anybody in America, but there's lots of other places you can actually get like window tint that you would install on your car. And there's a couple different kinds. The one I had, it's like a liquid, you spray it, and then you lay the sheet over top of the acrylic sheet. And you can uh, take a scraper and scrape out all the bubbles. But then once it dries, it's now stuck to the acrylic sheet. Then I just lay, I just uh, put on the inside of the helmet, put a piece of paper, sketched out the shape of the visor that I'm going to need, put that on top of the, uh, the tinted uh, acrylic sheet and then I just trace it out and cut it out. Now it's very pliable, very bendable and all I did was take hot glue, put it on the inside and then I just hot glued around it and it holds it in place. But it makes it nice and uh, dark so you can't see through it, which is kind of the idea for Kylo Ren, but that's the exact same way that I'm going to be doing the visor for uh, this Mandalorian that we're doing here. So you can see right now there's, there's no visor at all. Um, but same thing, it's just going to be an acrylic sheet with a piece of uh, tint over top. And then I already have a, uh, where do we have that now? There we go. Already 3D printed the shape of the actual visor that I'm gonna need. 
So this is already done exactly right size. So once I have the tints on the acrylic sheet, I'll lay this down, trace it out, cut it out, and hot glue it in place from the inside so you can't see any of the blue. And same thing, it'll be nice and tinted. You can't see in, but you can see out. And uh, it'll keep it nice and uh, nice and proper looking. And you can actually see on the inside of this helmet all the foam that I was talking about that I added in. So when I put this on my head, it's all very secure. And when I move around, especially like when I make quick movements, it doesn't like shake back and forth and like that. It's put like it on, Joe. Forward. Put it on. Show us, Joe. Put it on. So now when I move around, it doesn't shake or go anywhere. It's very form fitting and it'll just stay exactly where it's supposed to. Excellent. Yeah. So it's uh, so, it's a good way to do it. And that's why it's always important to leave enough room inside the helmet when you print it to add those pieces in. What are your thoughts on? So in, in my like, you know, hey, let me Google how to do this and blah, blah. Um, I found some people were using uh, thin sheets of Pet G. So have you ever tried? Because I ended up, I ordered, I was like, oh, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get, and I ordered a shit ton of stuff and I never used any of it. So I still yeah. have all of it. So I have like, um, I've, I've, I've never used sheets of Pet G. Yeah, I, I have I mean, window it, it should work. It should work. The, the sheets of Pet G, I've never personally used them, but it's not really any different than a sheet of acrylic. Um, but it's probably cheaper. And uh, yeah, yeah it should be like Amazon more. Canada. It was dirt cheap. It was like 10 sheets for like 26 bucks or something like that. Yeah, and that should be perfect. It just depends. You want to make sure you have a, a big enough size of the sheet. Like, for example, um, that's why I need to know how big your visor is going to be beforehand because this one uh, here is slightly bigger than like a, a 8 by 11 piece of standard like printer paper. So when I trace it out, it's it wouldn't fit. So if I bought a piece of PETG that was that size, it's going to be too small. So you just want to make sure that you're buying a piece that will be big enough to actually do the visor that you're doing. Yeah, these are 12 by 12. Yeah, so, so, that, yeah, so something like that would be fine. Well, because Anthony sent me um, a bunch of his Power Ranger helmets that he designed. Oh, nice. So I was like, oh, I'm totally going to make these. I never did. Because I was like, I I, print, I started printing out. Oh, I did, I, I did my first helmet finally. So I did like the Iron Man. I don't even remember what, which one. Um, and it came out so great. And it's like that much too small for my head. Mm -hmm. So I was like. Yeah, that I happens. That. Uh, I actually have an Iron Man here that we printed out and uh, it came out great. The only issue is that it's it's very snug, but it kind of has to be, this is the downside. So I'm actually going to motorize the face plate for this one. Um, so I need it to be very snug to my face so that when it opens up, it's not a whole bunch of foam and stuff that you see inside. But uh, the issue with this one is that it is also very snug. So getting in there is a little tough. There's just enough room to put up up top here, there's just enough room to put a little bit of foam, like I said, to hold it in place. Uh, but the idea is I want it very secure because when this moves up and down, I don't want this thing shaking down or being very loose on my head uh, when it does. But now, is there enough room in there for the mechanism? Should all fit there. Sorry, what was that? Is there enough room in? I know he doesn't have any ear holes. Um, is there enough room in there for the mechanism? Yeah. So there's actually I don't know if you can see there's quite a bit of room and free space up here. So oh, yeah. I did order very, very thin, thin servo servos. Um, so they're only about like maybe a, not even a centimeter, probably like three quarters of a centimeter tall. So they're very, very thin. Um, so there's lots of room up here in order to do the mechanism. So what happens when I shrunk this down to fit my head a little better, I did it more in the X direction this way. So it was very snug here and left it a little bit higher uh, in the Y direction this way so that there would be room for those mechanisms. So that's the thing. If you're going to be... Uh, doing stuff like that, you really gotta take it into consideration what you're planning to do. Yeah, Brownie wants to know what printer you used for the uh, the Iron Man chest piece. I'm guessing it was your S5. Uh, yeah, it was my S5. Yeah, that's, that's a very big uh, piece actually. Um, yeah, even even the back with it has like the back piece is actually the shoulders and the back together, like the traps. Um, and it was too big. I actually had to slice it in half because it wouldn't, it wouldn't fit. Um, yeah. I mean, the S5 is a beast of a machine, but yeah, it's a 500 by 500 by 500. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's quite big, but even this one, um, sitting up straight, I mean, I still had enough room. Uh, I probably finished with a, like, it could have went another this much higher. 
Uh, it's a it's a big machine. The only problem with a bigger machine too is that you do get uh, when it gets that high, it starts to shake a little bit back and forth. So you get a little, you're gonna do a little more extra pulls to work sanding it nice and smooth. Uh, Did you reinforce yours? I can send you my files. Sorry, say again. Did you reinforce yours? Because I. I did on mine and I can send you the files I used. I think I still have them. Reinforced like the thickness of it? No, no, no. The um your S5. Oh yeah, no, it's it's fully reinforced. It's just when it when once I have I have steel rods literally holding it from have. top to bottom. That's exactly what I have. I, I have two great big uh half inch thick steel uh threaded rods on each side. But once it gets up to like four hundred once it goes over four hundred millimeters high. It's just tough. Like you can't eliminate all the. Uh, it's called the Z wobble. You just can't oh, eliminate yeah. all of it. So that's all you can really do. But I, it, it's still there. It's still by no means terrible. It's you can, you can easily sand it out, especially if you're using a, a filler primer or anything like that, which is what I use. I mean, I don't know how good quality you guys can see on there, but this is incredibly smooth. Yeah, um, it's only 720p. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's uh, but it, it's it's really good stuff. And, filler? Sorry. Is that the Rust Oleum filler? It is. This is the Rust yeah, Oleum filler. Um, I swear by that stuff too. Yeah, you get it at Home Depot. It's incredibly easy to use. It's very cheap. You know where they sell it? Actually, cheaper than Home Depot. I'll tell you in Canada, Walmart. But it's not in the paint section. It's in the auto oh, section. Oh, I didn't know they had it at Walmart. I'll have to yep, check it's that in the sure. auto section. Hmm. I found that's, it by yeah, accident. That makes more sense. When I was in the paint section, I didn't remember seeing it. But yeah, that's yeah. Walmart. I found it by accident in the Walmart uh, in Buffalo when I was in the auto section. I was like, oh shit. So then I checked when I came home and I was like, bam, there it is. And that's it's perfect. like three bucks cheaper at Cam than Home Depot. Oh, that's but great. I'll yeah, have to pick it up there because, uh, but I mean, it, it I does a great job. Home. Like you got to do it in layers. The problem is people put it on too thick and then it drip, like you get a big drip yeah, mark down drips. there. And that's so hard to sand out later. Um, so you just want to do lots of very light coats. Like I'll do like three or four very light coats, like just spray, 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 and then I'll leave it. It only takes like five minutes to dry enough to do another coat. Then I'll just do that four or five times. Then I'll sand it and then I'll do the same thing again, another like four or five coats and then sand that. And every time I do that, it's incredibly smooth. Everybody always asks me like how, how do I get this stuff so smooth. Yes, and the exact uh, same thing I, I will tell you though, if you have, you're not, you're not close at all to the U S border, are you? Yeah. It's like three hours away from Montana. That's three hours, dude. I'm talking about me. Like I'm an hour. Um, oh yeah. Not that close. I mean, I go to the U S every couple, I'm going to the U S tomorrow. We're taking the kids to Syracuse for the weekend nice. to like all these like really cool things. Our kids don't want like presents. They want food. So we're yeah. taking like these, all these amazing food places in Syracuse. Um, but uh, so that primer, fill, that Rust-Oleum primer filler, it's cheap. like, what is it? Like thirteen ninety nine at Home Depot here? Yeah. Around there. It's like 12 or 13 And it's like, and it's like ten ninety nine, I think it, at Walmart. It's four bucks in the U S. Yes. Well, uh, same thing. Plasti did. Plasti did incredible. Oh dude. Cheap. Plasti. I used to like, a little like, known fact. It's like fourteen or fifteen dollars a can here. I know. Yeah. It's more than that here. It's like twenty five bucks a can here. It can't Actually, yeah, no, no. It, it, well, it used to be cheaper, but it has gone up in price. I think with all the tariffs and stuff that have happened recently. But um, so yeah, it's, it's very share. expensive. But yeah, it's like it's like five bucks a can or four bucks a can in the states. It's crazy. I'm going to share a very little known fact about me. This is something that nobody in the three D printing community actually knows. For a long time, I actually used to make puppets. No, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, and when I say puppets, I mean like full on like Muppet quality. Like I used to charge a small fortune for these things. Um, I actually have what's called Muppet fleece. It's actually the same stuff the Jim Henson company uses. And I still have some of it. Um, Brought it all with me when I moved. Um, So I used to use Plasti Dip a lot. And it was so cheap. And I moved up here and I was like, oh, I'm going to get some Plasti. What the... I was like, I'm not buying it here. It's, tough. it's ridiculous. I actually, that's actually how I did. Um, I don't know if, if you ever saw the pictures of the Wonder Woman corset uh, that I did before, but it, it, it looks great. The color is a bit off because we didn't buy the right uh, type of pearl to mix in with it, but uh, but it worked beautifully. The only problem is uh, like I used to do stuff like this. Like I would Plasti Dip this after I got it all smooth, and then I would take pearls and add it to a clear coat Plasti Dip and do it up top of it. In Canada, it's just so expensive. I, I can't justify to do it. Something yeah, as crazy. big as Iron Man. Um, I mean, they have but, I mean, a ton the quality of, of it's so now. good, and it lasts really, especially on a hard surface like this. It lasts a long time. It's very durable, and um, it doesn't scratch off very easy. So it's uh, it, it, it's really good stuff. But yeah, if you're so if you're in the states and you want a great way to finish props like this, 
Um, plasti dipping, again, a lot of people mess it up because they try to put it on too thick and get strip marks. If you get strip marks on plasti dip, it's done. It's ruined. You got yeah, to throw it, away. it all off and do it again. But very light, multiple coats is the key. But if you do that and then buy like the clear top coat and buy pearls and mix them in, you could get like uh, a, a pearl quality that you'd see in a car, like very shiny, very metallic looking. And you could do it on a gold on this and it would look like the Iron Man gold. And it's very durable, very, very great finish. Um, it won't scratch off. Like if you just brush against something, it's not going to scratch off like paint will. So if you're going to be wearing to cons, it's really nice. Uh, but again, it's, it's the, in Canada, it's incredibly expensive. So I, I won't do it for something like this. Um, but it's also very they quick. Have spray and, now too. Sorry. They have the spray now too. I've never used yeah, the, it. I've only, oh, used I use the big gun with the, the stuff in it. Cause you got to mix, uh, the pearls and everything into it in order to get the right colors. But in the States, they also have a much bigger selection of colors as well. So I, can, I was actually there, you can amazed with yeah. like all the colors. I, I was like, when did this happen? They used to have like black, white, gray, red. Yeah, they have lots blue. of metallic colors now. Now they people, have like all these colors, yeah. People plastic dip their whole cars now. There's a place here in Calgary that you can go and they'll plastic dip your entire vehicle. And they'll do it with all oh. the stick colors and stuff like that. So that you never, if you get a rock, like, cause it's rubber, you don't get rock chips cause the rock hits it and bounces off and just keeps going. So yeah, people it's do like it a scratch proof car. Yeah, I can't, well, I wouldn't say proof, but it's definitely much more resistant. Scratch resistant car. Yeah, absolutely. But for something like that, but again, so they came up with those metallic colors that are great for stuff like this um, because of the demand. But again, in Canada, it's just so expensive. I can't justify it. But yeah, uh, if, I, if I could get the stuff cheap enough, I would abs I would coat the entire Iron Man suit in black classy dip and then go over top of it with a, like a cherry red and gold uh, top coat and it would look sick. It would look really good. That's how we did the Wonder Woman one, and it came out awesome. The only problem yeah, is on that's, the uh, that did come out really good. Yeah, but that that one's uh, what's really nice is plastic is flexible as well, and the corset's flexible, so it's it stays on it really well. Um, the only problem is because it's very smooth and flexible. After time, the plastic will start to pull away from the corset, and you'll have to do it again. Um, but for stuff that's hard, like this Iron Man helmet, like it's never going to bend or anything else. So once it's on there, unless you really scratch or to take a chunk out of the plastic dip or something like that you'll you'll be able to keep it on there for good and it'll last as long as you really awesome cool it's all right who good. has questions for joe we're opening up for questions not you browning There's like a 20 second delay. That's good. Anyone? Bueller. There you Bueller. go. Three, 399 a can, Chris said in the States. Yeah. Well, Crazy. he's in West Virginia. Everything's like a dollar there. <laughs> How much is milk? Dollar. Oh, How much is milk in Canada? Five dollars. Yeah. It's because we have all the. We have quotas and stuff, so they farmers can only produce so much here, milk. And then they yeah, have to destroy everything else that they make where they don't have that kind of thing in the states. So, oh, dude, we buy. Farmers can just compete them. against each other, and it's a dollar a liter. Dude, I have a my ten year old is a half an inch shorter than I am, and I'm not short. Like my kids eat more than Sarah, and like one of my kids eats twice as much as Sarah and I combined. Mm -hmm. it's, it's ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. See Browning. There you go. They. This is West Virginia right here, sir. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> right. Oh man. But, well, there's no other questions. That's all. That's all I got for you guys. Guys. Joe came all the way from Calgary. <laughs> Wait. I'm sorry. He's all in the <laughs> So I'm trying to think if I have any questions for you, but usually when I have a question for you, I just text you. I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they trade their sisters too. Oh, Chris does, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, so do you, uh, let me ask you this. I don't know. You I don't know if you've ever sent me a did you finish your gauntlet? I do, I did, um, oh, but I actually oh. just dismantled it. Like two oh. days ago. Yeah, there was a, 
uh, I'm I'm redoing it now because I actually have another gauntlet I'm making that has like Stan Lee's autograph and Chris Hemsworth's autograph, and I'm redoing the whole thing. So I needed to figure out what resistors I used on the original LEDs. So I took the whole thing apart to like see the resistors. Oh, and it's sitting in like eight different pieces right now, <laughs> unfortunately. But I did finish it. Yeah, it came out it came out really well. But there's uh there's pictures of the finished gauntlet on my Instagram as well. So anybody who uh, checks out it or follows that. It's in, it. it's in the link already. It's in the description. Perfect. So there um, you go. So if you go down there and it has all the glowing lights and everything on it, it's fully finished. So do you still have the Stormbreaker you did with the lights? I do. Yeah. But Get it's, it. it's, it's also dismantled. <laughs> it took, it, it took a beating in, uh, uh, in, in the luggage flying to Boston. That's oh, where I met, yeah. uh, Chris Hemsworth. So I brought it there. And unfortunately it's uh, on the way back. It, it, needed a little love so it's uh currently also dismantled right now it needs to be glued re-glued back together but also that is uh pictures of how the lighting worked and everything like that um is all on my instagram as well so you'll check that out it, it has great cool. videos and of the lighting effect joe's instagram is in the box <laughs> down there so uh okay yeah, browning I'll, actually I'll, does have browning has a question that is actually legitimate and i will bring it up on the screen <laughs> <laughs> And this is actually a really good question. So just like simple part orientation, how would you orient parts? Like when you do your helmet, um, I actually just saw somebody posted it. And I, I think it may have been in the Hex 3D group, uh, Jeff Wicks's group. Um, do you print them right side up, upside I down? Do. You know. Um, well, actually, okay, we'll just use. Just grab the Mando helmet or whatever you have there. Yeah, just... we'll use this one here. So yeah, so if I'm going to print it, I am going to print it. In a regular orientation so what's nice i'll share my screen again and just show you guys um i guess how i always set up my files in 3d builder the angle that i want to print them in beforehand oh sorry i'll share my screen and i will pop your screen up on the screen there it is all right so um All right, so uh, what's really nice about 3D Builder is it will allow you to orient all of this. It'll let you settle products. So you can see right here, uh, obviously it's floating in midair. I mean, although you could print it that way and put supports underneath, that's gonna take a lot of support. Um, and it, you know, it could just be a real big waste of plastic. So when you select a part, you can also go to Object Settle and it will set it down. No flat. shit. Yeah. I, I absolutely did not know that was there. Yeah, so now, and then now you can see there's still a little bit of gap uh, on the very bottom. However, that's where you'll put your supports underneath. That's I tiny never, compared to how much support you would have, even just oh, by yeah. estimating. Huge, huge difference. Um, and then, uh, so I, I never print with stuff flat in the ground. So after I import this into S3D or, or whatever program you're using, um, I would always double click on it and raise it up two millimeters so that it's sitting flat because that way it's going to put a ring of uh, support the whole way around. And that just adds a lot of stability. Um, like I was saying before with the S5, when you're printing that big chest piece and it kind of rocks back and forth, if you have a really solid um, foundation of support. It, it really mitigates the shaking and allows it to print a lot more smoothly. Do um, you raft when you print helmets? I do. I do. I, I raft when I print everything, to be honest, um, because I have some really good E3D, um, I think they're E3D, uh, sheets that I put over the glass that allow it to get really good adhesion. But even then, um, I find sometimes supports don't sit very well onto uh, the glass or like they'll, after like if I have a 48 hour print halfway through, because it's print so high, it's just wiggling back and forth. Sometimes they break off or fall off or what have you. So I find with the raft, it really helps stop that from breaking off. Um, the other thing that I don't do that a lot of people do is they'll create automatic supports. I don't do that very often. So what happens is I will, I know this little hair to see, I'll just flip this upside down so you can see a little better. Here we go. So what happens is if this was sitting flat on the ground, I would, uh, put the supports. I would manually put these the entire ring around because when you auto support them, it'll only put supports in certain areas. And sometimes it doesn't cover the whole bottom especially if your um, degree of, of orientation is very good. Um, the other thing that people will do, and I'll raise this up so you can see the bottom of the helmet. 
um, they will put supports that go all the way up their helmet right to the middle. A lot of helmets, especially anything that's rounded like this one is at the top, you don't need supports there. Um, when you actually print it, like you'll get a bit of uh, filament kind of hanging there that you got to remove and scrape off later, but it actually will continue printing spirally up until it, it stops at the top. So um, where it's curved right here, it will just keep printing there and there and there. And then you don't need to have any support underneath that at all, actually. And that way you save a butt ton of material. Because if you ended up, if you auto supported time. this, it would probably cover most of the bottom of this, saying that, oh, you know, the angle is too great, so it's going to have to need support. Um, but, I mean, you could double the amount of filament you need to use for this helmet by doing that. So if you just settle this the way that we did, um, raise it up, you know, maybe two millimeters and then put your manual supports all along the bottom. Uh, and then don't put any supports underneath this. You could print it just like that and it'll be fine. The only other place that you need to add supports is just right here underneath the lip of this visor because it obviously can't start printing in midair. Um, but what I do is if you actually take uh, in S3D, you can manually, you can manually orientate all the angles. So what I would do is if it was flat like this, I would just make it straighter like that, go in here, add my supports so that they go from here to here. And then that way the supports go like that. But then I'll change the orientation of the helmet back to flat again, but it will keep the angled supports like that. And the supports will actually print angled. So then that way you don't have to do supports from here all the way down to the ground. You just have to do supports to another part of the helmet and they'll print, uh, not, ho not horizontally really, but uh, a lot more horizontal than they normally would instead of up and down. And that way you save on filament as well. Yeah. Have, have you played with the vertical, uh, the horizontal supports? I've, I've, I haven't really had the need for it, but. Um, I, I, I have a huge uh, need for it. For example, when I did the forearm, do I have one right here? Um, I do not. Um, oh, this piece is oh, pretty good. Yeah, here we go. Oof. All right, I'm just gonna I'll still you back here. to you here. There we go. Okay, so this is uh, one of the biceps from the Mark 85 that I was talking about. Um, so when you look inside, there's actually a lip. I mean, you can probably see it on here very well, but there's like a lip that goes all the way around the top of this ring. Um, it wants to add, and I actually think I did here, I did what I just said I never do, and I put uh, supports all the way to the bottom. But what I could have done is if I had taken this, orientated it, orientated it slightly like this, and then added the supports, they would actually connect thinking that it was angled. So it'll actually put the supports onto the part instead of onto the ground, and it'll butt up against there. So what happens when I change this and put it back upright, it will actually print those supports at an angle so that it doesn't need to print supports from the flat of the bed all the way to the top of this, which would take obviously quite a bit of extra filament when it only needs to print maybe five millimeters of filament on the on right below the lip here just to give it enough so that when it starts to print the lip, it gives it something to bite onto. So by doing the horizontal supports, it's kind of hard to explain what I've shown you, uh, but unfortunately I don't have the program. Uh, when you do it that way, you just save yourself a lot of time and a lot of filming. Because that's the other thing too, is if it has to print supports for a hundred millimeters from the very bottom, it, it takes a lot of extra time to do that. Yeah, that's hours. Could, yeah, for sure. That's, and it does that's the, angle the difference through. between a one day print and a two day print. Absolutely, oh, yeah. and it, it saves a lot of products, saves a lot of time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Mark asks, what upgrades do you recommend? I can tell you, because I told Joe exactly what to put on his S5. Absolutely. Um, so my S5, uh, one of the big ones that Chris recommended, and I also highly recommend, is getting a uh, a BL Touch, because where the bed is just so big, it's the, it's very uh, it's it's not flat. It, it's 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 definitely not. So there's a yeah, lot of variation. You can't level that bed. I you can't level it. It's too hard. With the four little, you can't do it. Um, so what this does is it builds a 3D mesh in the memory and then remembers so that it knows that this area is a little dipped a little low. Then what happens when it's printing over that, it'll actually drop it down low a little bit when it's making your raft. And then when it's done making the raft, everything else will be level and it prints on top of that. So it's, everything's nice. Um, the, well, you've got, you have a tight narrow on yours, right? 
I do. I also I have so, one of mine. Yeah. So um, we had the feel touch. Um, the other one of the other big things I would recommend is get a custom piece of glass cut. Um, go like I have a six mil thick piece of glass the size of my bed for my S5 uh, of tempered glass. So it's way better. Um, it's not going to overheat and start to split. And even if it does, it's not going to be like in, in a dangerous way. Like you clean it up easily. Um, I, I print PLA, so mine never gets hot enough to have to worry about that. But it, when you get a nice piece of like thick, thick glass cut, it usually has less imperfections and will be smoother. I got the E3D Mac that sticks on top of it because I don't do the whole, I used to do the hairspray thing and the, the glue stick Magigoo, thing. Magigoo, baby. Yeah. It's all I, about Magigoo. I, I don't I don't use it myself, but I do hear it's a great I problem. effing love um, Magigoo. Uh, I like these because I uh, you just stick them on and then I never have to worry about it again. Um, yeah, so I put the mats, put, I put the mats on there and that's all all done. Uh, so that's what I do for the bed. I got the BL tops to make sure it, it levels itself properly. And the other thing that I did, uh, like Chris recommended, was uh, I put a Titan Arrow with a volcano on it. So um, it just gives you so much better control over the temperature of the filament as it's coming out uh because it's got a, a a long barrel versus uh the normal reality ones are like this big the nozzles on these ones are like this long so it has so much more time to melt and come down it's much more consistent uh it gives you a much smoother print like i don't know if you can see this very well this is like an incredibly smooth print um that came out where if i had done that on my stock uh s5 it would it would not have been that nice. Yeah. Oh, um, oh, the second I got my S5, I didn't even bother. Um, yeah. One thing that I don't think you have, Joe, that I have on my S5 is I actually have a Kinovo uh, silicone heating uh, bed. Yeah, I don't have that. No. Because that that was the I I never even turned it on with that original bed heater on there. Do yeah. you know what they do? It, 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 like, it takes I know a long time to heat up. But for people who don't even know, so Creality in their infinite wisdom, so they have this 300 millimeter machine, this 400 millimeter machine, right? So the 300 has a 300 millimeter bed heater, it's bed, all built yeah. in. The 400, the S4, which I have, has a 400. Now they have this 500 millimeter bed, and instead of making a 500 millimeter bed heater, yeah. they take one of the 300 millimeter bed heaters bed and all yeah and they screw it on to the 500 millimeter bed yeah it, it, it is it is really the 400. <laughs> and it takes so, it takes a hard, long a long time to heat up and it also doesn't distribute that heat evenly so that's why um like well, you've got actually, 200 millimeters on yeah. every side that's not heated so on my on my cr 10 s and my s4 um, I only ever have to, for PLA, I have the temperature at like 54 degrees for the bed. And that's more than enough to keep everything nice and stuck to the bed and everything else. On my uh, 5S, I, or my S5, I have to uh, put it up to 75. Because if I... Like, how long does it take? How long does it take for that uh, bed? Probably about 15 minutes to, to heat up to that temperature. Um, but when I'm doing something like that chest piece, um, it's so wide that, like Chris said, it's a 300 millimeter heat bed on a 500 millimeter bed. So the, the, the outer region of this far the whole way around doesn't heat the same way as the inner. Um, so if I don't have the temperature up to that temperature uh, of 75, then when I have something that's towards the exterior of the bed, it doesn't have the same level of heat. So all of a sudden the wrap will start to lift up and then it really messes up your print. So you have to raise the temperature. That's also why I suggested getting that really thick glass because then when the glass heats up, because it's so thick, it retains the heat longer as well. So if you get like a draft in your house or anything like that, the glass isn't just going to cool down and stuff's going to unstick. Um, so I would definitely suggest like a six millimeter thick glass bed to, or glass sheet to put on top of the bed because it will help. Um, like I said, it takes longer to heat up. And that's probably why mine takes so long too, because it also has this big piece of glass that needs to heat up. But when it does, it really retains the heat a lot better. Because if you have a three millimeter piece of glass, it just the, the heat dissipates too quickly and it doesn't hold it very well so it, it wouldn't be very good for that um yeah see on that. mine i have a, a five millimeter mirror that i had cut because mirror yeah, inherently great too. to be a mirror has to be flat yeah so even if the bed's not flat and if your bed's not flat too um i forget where i, learned I actually this. said glass but sorry my, mine is actually a mirror as well a mirror yeah um i forget who showed me this it was ages ago um I don't know if I saw it in a video or what, 
Actually, I think it was a video, one of Uncle Jesse's videos ages ago about leveling a, uh, a bed that wasn't level. If you're going to use a glass or something on top of it, use a straight edge, you know, like a metal ruler and see where your dips are and your where, your, where you have dips and uh, rises and then mark them with a Sharpie and then put masking tape in the dips. That's smart. I've never done that myself, but yeah, uh, it, 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 works. it makes sense. My only um, worry is when you start to heat stuff up, like like I'm saying, I was having like 75 degrees when you're- Yeah, but masking tape, happens. you're fine. I mean, it's painter's tape, same thing. Um, but I will tell you, my Kinovo bed, my 500 by 500 bed heats to 60 in like 45 yeah. seconds. Yeah, That's and I've had other people insane. tell me the same thing. They've done that upgrade. It, it sounds great. Uh, for it's me, like, I mean, it's I crazy expensive. My... Yeah. Um, but it's so worth it. I mean, I got mine- um, for any of you guys who have ever heard of uh, McEwen 3D, Ryan is a really good friend of mine. He actually lives uh, just over the border. So um, I've gone over to his place a, a bazillion times to uh, help him get orders done and stuff like that. So he he makes these uh, for all three, for the 300, 400, and 500 series. Nice. Um, and he hooked me up for my S5. That's <laughs> so, awesome. I worked um, my ass off for him for two days, though. I, I, I've so, had other people tell me the same thing about upgrading to the, the silicone. It's and, worth uh, it. Yeah, I, I've heard really good things. I just I don't use my S5. I only use my S5 when I have a piece too large for my S4. Um, yeah. I, well, you know I what? Primarily you know, just use my tennis, my S4. You know what I just got, Joe? And I don't know if I told you. I've been meaning to tell you. Um, Digit Makers has these. Um, they're like uh, insulated pads that are 400 by 400 and they're like 11 bucks. Nice. No, I haven't seen those. So I was up there um, finishing. The, so I, I have the video on my, on the versus 3d channel for the Einscan scanner. That's, that's actually the scanner I'm getting. Um, but I was up there shooting the video and I remember seeing them on his website and I'm like, Oh, well, you know, let me check it out. So he gave me one and I brought it home and I put it on my S4 it heats up a little bit faster, but I got to tell you, it retains the heat way better. Well, that's what's more important, right? Because you want to have even heat distribution so that stuff doesn't lift yeah. off the bed. Because as soon and as it starts can... to lift off the bed, it crinkles the whole thing. So especially when you're doing stuff like this, like for Iron Man, if it lifted off, you know, here, it will shift everything up. So when this is done, it's not going to be where it's supposed to be. So then when I try to line up all the pieces to fit on the costume, the pieces won't fit properly. Together. So that's why it's so important to have like really good heat distribution on the bed, which is why I said like get a nice thick glass because it might take longer to heat up, but better to have Worth better attention waiting longer than to have us uh, you know speed it up and 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 have a have a warped print. Um, oh, sorry. Also, Mark, your other question: where where in Calgary to get them? Um, Spool 3D is local here. Um, they're really good. I, I I've I've done a little bit of work with them. Uh, I buy my filament from uh, 3D Printing Canada. Uh, I buy the neat premium filament. It's it's awesome filament. It prints like butter um, and it's it's relatively inexpensive. I think it's, uh, I think it's like $23 a piece Canadian um, normally. And it's, it's just a really high end, uh, really good uh, filament. So I buy my filament from there. My Titan Arrow, I did buy from them as well uh, with the Volcano, but I don't think they're selling them anymore. I think there was something happened. I don't know what, but uh, they, I don't think they sell them there anymore, but you can still get those at uh, school 3d. Yes. Um, like digit makers. They have them too. One thing yeah, I would think they're, they're local. Yeah. He was asking where they could get them in Calgary. So yeah, oh yeah. in, in uh, Calgary, it would be school 3d is really the only place that, that sells like that stuff. One thing I would suggest though, too, is now just uh, last week, E3d released their Hamera. I've seen it. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. Um, and I think I'm going to maybe try to get one for my birthday. Um, nice. I want to put on my Raptor actually. Oh yeah. Because I mean, I have Titan and the thing is that the quality of the Hamera versus the Titan arrow are extraordinarily similar. Uh, a couple of my good friends already have them and they've told me flat out Titan arrow Hamera. It's pretty much on par. Mm -hmm. um, very difficult to distinguish. But the Hamera 
is slightly lighter and it um it mounts to pretty much anything and it's super um kind of generic in certain ways where if you mount a Hamera on something, it doesn't matter what printer it is, and you say, okay, I love this fan duct. I'm going to use this fan duct for all my printers. I'm going to put Hameras on everything. It doesn't matter what printer you have. You can pop that exact same fan duct in the exact nice. same spot. So where that, you know, it's very, I don't want to say cookie cutter, but I'm going to, but I don't mean it in a bad way. Um, I mean it in a really good way where you can use it's all the same parts. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, you're not you know rushing around like oh well you know this mount only fits on you know this a net a 47 whatever yeah. and i can't use it on my cr10 and so it it makes it um a little bit easier i think so well, something really nice to um a lot of the the newer creality machines that they're coming out with actually come with the new style heads it has uh, still a Bowden, I think it's still a Bowden drive, but it when it pushes it down, it actually has a V6 built into them already, and it actually has a spot to install a VL touch. I think that's the CR10 S version two, not the Pro. Uh, uh, from what I hear, those oh the new version. one, yeah. Well, even the, the original new. CR10, they have like they actually Creality sells a mount. Mm -hmm. This one actually comes basically... with it already, though. Like, it doesn't come with the BL Touch, but it has the mount and everything already on it. Yeah. So you just buy the BL Touch you and it's pop it in. Yeah. It's also plug well, yeah, and play. And, well, they yeah. make them now because everybody wants them. I yeah. still laugh, and I'm going to be like total print douche for a second here. It irritates me to no end when people are like, I installed the BL Touch on my Ender 3. Really? Yeah, they were, they're not very irritating. <laughs> You're 220 millimeter bed. If you can't level that shit, stop printing and pay someone else to do it. Yeah. Learn to level your bed. <laughs> yeah, um, it's 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 true. Uh, bed leveling, it's it's not overly difficult, but people forget to do it. There's a lot of sites, and even I've been that douche where I made a comment the other day because same thing. Somebody's like, "Is this supposed to be like this?" They had their Creality machine going, and they were printing, and it's not sticking to the bed. It's because it, it's just too high up, and all I had to do is is adjust the bed, and he didn't know. And I mean, he yeah. posted a thing in the forum saying, "I know, this is holy crap." Bed because it's not touching the bed because you have to, adjust. but like in the same thing. And then they got it. And the gantry was a little loose and um, it's because they didn't, they didn't tighten anything. And it, it was just tough. Um, so, I mean, the biggest thing is, uh, and I, I mean, I, I, I'm bad for it too. And uh, Chris knows because I, I message him every time I have a problem, but um, I, I, I always try to Google now like, first to try to see if I can figure out most things. Uh, especially I thought I was your Google. Was that sorry? I thought I was your Google. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> well, yours is more technical issues when I'm having uh, uh, technical problems. But yeah, when it's just uh, a performance related issue on the on the machine, if it's if it's just not sticking, probably like I, I'd usually Google it or if I'm having under or over extrusion stuff like that. Um, people have asked these questions a million times. Normally, you'll get well. Number one, you won't get ridiculed if you Google and find the answer yourself. Um, I don't ridicule really you much. Not, not, not you, but uh, but like, I, and I do feel bad. I see a lot of people in forums will ask a question, and they just get brutalized. And I mean, in in fairness, it's usually a pretty easy question to figure out. Um, but if you Google stuff, normally in five minutes you'll figure out what your issue is, especially the stuff like oh, under yeah. extrusion, bed leveling. Um, you know, it just just finding out. Especially if you if you use S three D, their great their uh, troubleshooting page is awesome. Awesome, really good, yeah. Um, I just wanna answer Mark real quick. So will this work? Yes. Um, it's a direct drive system, number one, so it's gonna work way better with your palette. Um, and you know what, hang on one second. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna show you this little thing that I made that I use on uh, pretty much all of my palette machines. And uh, hang on, Joe, talk. Yeah, no problem. Um, the, great, uh, the great thing about the Titan Arrow uh, is that I went from turning my, my CR10 products from Bowdoin systems to direct drive. Uh, it's a world of difference. The reason I even got into it wasn't because I was having bad prints come out with the, the Bowdoin setup, but when I switched to the direct drive, you can just use so many different kinds of filament now because um, I was just trying to use a flexible filament and with a Bowdoin system does not work with flexible materials. It's, it's horrible actually. 
Um, so it just, it wouldn't stick to each other. It wasn't coming out very fluid or anything else. And I was going absolutely insane trying to figure it out. And it was just because I needed to upgrade to a direct drive system. So as soon as I did that, I got great prints on the flex, um, the flexible products. And I just find there's less problems, uh, with the direct drive system, especially with those Titan arrows. Um, you never have to worry about changing Teflon again. Uh, there is a piece of Teflon tube with this big that you stick in, but it doesn't touch anything hot. So it never warps like it does in a standard CR10 where after a while it, it starts to like melt or get disfigured and you got to end up replacing it. You won't have to worry about that with this or if you have like a uh, uh, Creator Pro or something like that where it's it, the Teflon is, is really paramount in, in the uh, the heat, the extruder. Uh, so I would highly suggest going to that specific direct drive system because it's it's very low maintenance, very hassle free. I mean, there are problems like any other one, um, any other system like things can happen, but it's incredibly easy to fix. It's incredibly easy to take apart. Um, if a part does go to shit, then you can literally just throw the sprocket away, get a new one, put it in, put it back together, off you go. It's very very easy, and the direct drive system just has so much better control over the filament that your my my prints were night and day in quality. Um, especially like how much, <laughs> how much post process work I had to do in sanding everything down it was night and day after I switched from Bowden system to a direct drive. So, okay. So here is what I'm going to show you. So I designed this in like 42 seconds. So this is basically my universal pallet adapter. It is a PC 10 pneumatic fitting screwed into a little doohickey that I made. And I have the grommet for the pallet output tube in there. Nice. And I literally, so what I do on my Titan Arrows, my BMGs, um, I have a piece of Capricorn tube sticking out so I can feed it in easier. I slide this on top of it and done. Ex the exit tube or the output tube goes right in here, done. That's all I do. And it's awesome. the easiest thing ever. I have a bunch of them printed and I just have them like literally sitting by all my printers that I use pallets on. Nice. I still have, and you can see the, the black and white boxes right there. Uh, they sent me my upgrades. I've upgraded one of my pallets already. Um, awesome. uh, so. Chris, to answer your question. Yes. I have a Titan arrow um, with a volcano uh, on all of my CR 10 machines. So I, I have a, I have a 10 S an S four and an S five and they all have Titan arrows. Uh, with uh, so the direct drive Titan Arrow and uh, a volcano uh, attached to it as well. Uh, Ivy, I've heard of people using that. I've never done it myself, so I really don't know if it'll work, um, but it should. I mean, it, as long as it's going to take a 3D image of your head. Oh no, Chris. So, I know. Mean, suck. Well, yeah, but if, if it's right. just for a basic. For those of you who can't see. Head, so. I think it's fairly local to me too. Um, but yeah, any of those phone scanners, I've, I've tried so many of them and they suck. You really need to get into like- well, I would give it a try. I, I've, I've never done it, like I said, but I mean, as long as it will save uh, or you can export it as like an STL file or an OBJ file or something like that, that'll work in, in say like 3D Builder. Um, as long as it gets the general shape of your head, because it doesn't need detail. But right? no, but that's, that's the problem with those. It's photogrammetry. So oh, okay. a lot of times, they don't even put the mesh pieces together properly. Mm -hmm. That's what sucks. It's not the actual meaning that's the problem. They don't put them, they don't build the mesh properly. So it, it's not even a sizing thing. It's an, I can't actually use this because like it scanned here and everything's fine. And then when it scans over here, when it puts everything together, my nose might be over here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So no, yeah, that's, they're that's all terrible. fucked up. Well, um, I, I, if, if that's what's happening, then I wouldn't bother. But I mean, yeah, they're if, you, terrible. If, if they do come out with an app that, that allows you to get a good image of your head and save it as an STL, I mean, that should work. So all you need is a basic shape, basically. Uh, but I think it would be just as easy to do the way that I showed you in Make Human and then export the file. I just, I just think it would probably just be easier to do it that way. Yeah. And then, uh, wait, where is it? Hold on. I'm going to, Ivy, I am going to pick on you for a second. Hang on. This right here. Uh, a Titan Arrow costs almost as much as the Ender 3. Yeah, they're um, not cheap. I mean, they might be cheap in the case. I, again, this is me being print do. Same thing with, like, learn to love your bed. Um, it, it's kind of like, 
you're going to buy a $300 printer and you're going to put a $200 extruder and hot end on it. Buy a better printer, you know, to yeah. start off with. You um, might, have, you, yeah, he, Chris is right. You might as well just, just for the sheer print volume, you know, um, I would, if, if you were going to do that, I would buy an S4 because then you're going to get a 400 by 400 by 400 print volume and then slap uh, a Titan Hero on that. Then you're going to have a really good direct drive system with a large build space. Sorry, I'm just answering my wife. Um, so, yes, I did razz you in the store. I remember that. Um, it, I mean, well, Ivy knows. So, um, so I just actually officially started working for Anycubic in their marketing. I am actually the North American marketing lead now. Woohoo! Um, so, um, I really love their Chiron. I, I haven't used it. I would know. <laughs> it's 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 four four hundred by four hundred by four fifty. So it's actually slightly bigger than the CR ten S four. Um, it's not direct drive, but it's 24 volt number one it comes with a five millimeter ultra base bed on it so you don't need anything extra um i threw a titan arrow on mine and then i ended up taking it off and i put a bmg on there instead um but yeah brownie knows he's got one too and he's just like oh my god these things are amazing um i have a ton of people that have them now so that's a a really really great option too and it's less expensive than a cr 10 s4 yeah, I guess. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a diehard uh, Creality guy. I gotta say. I mean, I, I used to be to try out a lot of other printers. I, I, in, I guess, in your own defense, but I, uh, I just like the build volume, the simplicity. I don't need bells and whistles. Um, I, I also ex exclusively print PLA, so I don't really need enclosures I or bells and whistles. Mostly, what? I have my rare ABS print, you know, but I have other yeah. machines that I use just for ABS, and then I have. But I mean, you know me. I mean, it's full back there of all kinds of shit. Yeah. And I'm actually work. I'm working on uh, Formbot right now to send me the Trudon for a review. Nice. So, I, uh, but I'm like, I'm yeah, I want really the 400 one. I don't want the little one. Yeah, I, I'm still really excited for uh, any cubic to come out with a larger resin printer because I have. So many cool, uh, very, very highly detailed and very, very finely pieced masks that I can't FDM print. Yeah, they, and they don't fit. On um, you know, it's funny. My friend Jason um, just he sent me a picture yesterday. Um, he just got the Piopoli Phenom, and he sent me a. He was like, "I could fit three photons in this." I'm like, "What?" And I'm like, "I need a picture for scale." So he has. He took a picture. He put his photon next to this phenom, and it's seriously like. Let me let me try to find something to compare it to. Here's the photon, and here's the phenom. That's it's crazy. ridiculous. See, he can, he can need, actually need, put photons like inside them, but they're yeah. also you know eighteen hundred US dollars. Absolutely. Well, when I did this, like I printed this. This is uh, the inner details for the Iron Man. Uh, oh, for that mask, yeah. Mask from the beginning of Endgame. Uh, but I had to slice this. I mean, luckily I was able to slice it a couple different areas and it still came out quite nicely. Well, like here's like, I don't know if this is, like uh, yeah, right here is where I had to slice it oh, a couple yeah. areas and try to glue it back together. The problem is it doesn't always, you don't always glue properly back together. Like you got to make sure they're all lined up properly and it can be a bit abusive. Uh, but I mean, the quality that came out is wonderful. It's just, I wish I could have done this in one full print and so I have to slice it so all the, the pieces weren't a bugger to try to put back together. But yeah, that's 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 what I'm waiting for. It's just a bigger one. So I have masks that are about the same size and they're like uh masquerade vault style masks, but they're they're very delicate. I tried to FDM print them and no. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Um no. so yeah, Browning, if we're talking about Creality versus any cubic, Browning just has a really good point. Where if you side by side them, the any cubics need way less mods out of the box. Like the especially the bigger ones, like they come with yeah. an ABL on them already, you know, and they have a much better bed heater and things like yeah. that. Very, and very true. 
and replaceable stepper drivers. That is, yeah, that is nice. Yeah. I, uh, that, that was, so it's funny because they were razzing me in there, the comments saying how I had to take my machine to the shop uh, one time. That was the issue though. I couldn't find out. Oh, what I I, oh, I remember. It was the stepper drivers that were, that were blown. And unfortunately, like, I don't yeah, and know the, how to the replace stuff like it. that. Yeah. Electronics are not my game. So uh, yeah, I had Dude, to get to I, a shop and get that done. I just put like a couple weeks ago, uh, an SKR 1.3 and 2209s in my S4. That machine owes me nothing. I will tell you this. It has thousands of hours on it. It owes me it owes me no favors. Yeah. This thing prints like it is a brand new souped up Corvette again. That's awesome. It's unbelievable. Like just the the quality I'm getting out of it again like it was brand new uh, and it's dead quiet the only yeah. thing i hear is the fan yeah that's uh that's pretty sweet um i gotta say like that's kind of why i'm a big fan of the creality uh 3d printers is i gotta say like literally my three printers well i guess not the big one as much anymore but uh for about 10 months straight all three printers were going 24 hours a day seven days a week never stopping and i mean i had minimal issues just because they don't they don't have a lot of like fancy bells and whistles or anything else that can go wrong. They're, they're very straightforward machines. That's also why they're pretty cheap. I mean, you can pick up a 10 S for what the, like in Canada, it's like probably $700 Canadian, which is probably like five fifty us. They're just very cheap. And, but I feel like they're real workhorses. Like, I mean, mine have been anyway, they, they go 24 hours a day, seven days a week, minimal problems. And even when I need to do a fix, it's like a $10 fix. And it takes me 20 minutes to install a part. And, it's back in working condition. So I, I got to say, it's usually why I'm a big fan of them is uh, they just, they just, mine just keep going. Yeah. That's, and I, don't get me wrong. I have, I, when I got the, here's the funny thing. And again, I, I'm not like pro or con, like pro or against one or the other, really, because I use them both. Um, I had two CR 10s. When I got my Chiron, I sold one of my CR 10s. I still have my S4. I still have my S5. When I got my Anycubic uh, Mega S, I immediately sold my Ender 3 because it's a way better printer mm -hmm. um, overall, like build, stability, everything about it. And it's I have six of them over in the room over there with a big, I went to Home Depot and bought one of those like giant metal racks. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Put, <laughs> I put boards, you know, I went, I bought like MDF and I had them cut it to size and I made, you know, MDF shelves. So everything's perfect. Yeah. And I have six of them and I'm going to put three more on that rack for, uh, one customer that I have that I just run jobs for him 24, seven, 365. And it's always mm -hmm. small parts. It's beautiful. Um, the only upgrades I've ever done to those is I changed the fan duct because I wanted a more wraparound one and, um, beats for ease of use for me so i can do quick changes i did uh magnetic pei beds mm -hmm. yeah those those oh, are nice that's, that's something i would love they to really do they are they're incredibly expensive though when you start to get into the size of like for an s5 yeah oh yeah no no um, i can't just I, the well, I got uh xena from arion um gave me a really good deal on six of them so nice um yeah. so yeah it's really but good. so it's 10 30 my fit so I, I don't i don't know if i said this before but i actually had to leave a dinner i know i told you, you know this joe yeah. but i had to i had to leave my mother-in-law's 70th birthday party to come do the stream tonight um and we've got some company here now so i have to go in a few minutes so um does anybody have, I mean, I know there's probably a bunch of questions now because they're all spitting out, but does anybody have a couple more questions that we can field before I have to end this? Uh, Browning, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Ivy likes to tease me. I, it's okay though, because whenever she needs help, I get to abuse her. No, this show was scheduled first. Just so you know. 
They planned. Well, her birthday is actually on Christmas. Thanks, Ivy. Um, her birthday is actually on Christmas, so we gave her her present on that. But um, tonight was like the whole family, like big poopla for seventy. Normally, we don't do anything extra, but anyway, it wasn't me who forgot his wife was getting an award tonight. Just saying. All right. Uh, anybody else? No. Okay. Well, guys, if you guys end up anyway. having other any other like size and questions that you come up with later, uh, like I said, uh, in the description is my uh, Instagram uh, page. So if you go like that and follow that, you might see stuff too that you get questions for later on. You're more than welcome to shoot me a, a DM on there, and and I'll do my best to help you out. Yeah, Ping Joe, or you can email us. Uh, Telly and I get the emails. Uh, 3D printing a no question mark at shit iCloud. Yeah, iCloud.com. No, gmail.com. That's where it is. Links in the description. Um, so anyway, Joe, thanks, buddy. No I really problem, appreciate please. it. I, I know everybody really appreciates it um, because it's really this is such a hard thing, and you are so good at it. One of those few people. Um, yeah, no problem. just really gets it, you know, and yeah. I'm just so uh, yeah, it's, that you well, I, I used to waste so much money on stuff that I was trying to print that I, I had to figure something out. So, um, well, you and, did a good job. No, thank you. And, and yes, Abby, I, I do feel questions. So if you do shoot me a, a PM on there, then yeah, I'll, I'll be able to help you. Out. Yeah. Joe's a good boy and he's Canadian. <laughs> Too nice. <laughs> yeah. He might, he, he might be nice. And that, see, that's like the difference. I, I mean, I live in Canada and I'm a permanent resident now. I live it's here okay. for real. I'm like, I'm all legal and shit. You just want to Not that I was illegal here. before. Cause I wasn't, but it's different now. I, now I like, now I have the legal right to live here forever and I don't have to get more visas and shit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm from Boston. I'm an asshole. Joe's too nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh yeah, <laughs> here you go, Joseph. That's fine. I get a lot, I get questions all the time from people. It's not big deal. <laughs> um, so yeah. So anyway, seriously, absolutely, Joe. Thank you so much. Really, yeah, not a problem. Anytime. Really appreciate you doing the show. Um, we have a few people that uh, we're just trying to schedule around for the next couple of weeks um, or the next couple uh, streams. So I can't actually tell you who our guest is in two weeks because I'm not exactly sure. But we'll post it and all that good stuff. And anyway, this is Chris uh, speaking for myself and Telly when I always say thank you guys for tuning in again and uh, everybody who watches the stream after the fact and all that good stuff. And uh, subscribe, ring the bell, you'll know. I usually try to post links for the streams at least a few days ahead of time so people kind of have an idea and all that good stuff and anything else you want to say joe nope that's it for me all right then we are out Hi, happy guys. new year guys <laughs>